Hi, South Point friends, Matt here. Hey, we just wanna let you know that you are not alone. At South Point, we have a saying, you matter deeply to God. We're deeply committed in this difficult season to be a place of connection and support for you and your family. With so much unknown before us, it is normal for all of us to emotionally overreact to the situation at hand. We'll either hyper-focus on the facts and lose sight of the future, or we'll hyper-focus on faith and lose sight of the present. Neither of those helps us, our loved ones, or others. I like what the author Kerry Newhoff says, we can in both faith the real facts and ideal faith. These don't have to be opposites. Listen, we all know how easy it is to allow fear and panic to rule the day. While this is normal, it always leads to unwanted results. As I was thinking about this, I realized that fear leads to four outcomes none of us wants. Outcome number one, Fear makes us unable to love our neighbors. The above statement feels so untrue until we're honest enough to admit that fear often drives us to protect ourselves even at the cost of others. If you don't believe me, just look at the pictures of the grocery stores and the panic-induced frenzy to get what you can while you can without regard to our neighbors. And this is the exact opposite of what Jesus calls his followers to do. Fear and love are like oil and water. They just don't mix. Outcome number two that we don't want from fear. Fear will cause us to miss the present moments as we're so focused on the future. You see, fear naturally drives us to react. In situations like this where circumstances are beyond our control, the only action we feel like we can actually take is to worry. And worry is where we fool ourselves into playing the what if game like it actually makes a difference. And we know it doesn't. I love this quote. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, it only empties today of its strength. Worry is a game with no winners because it takes our focus off of what is happening in the moment and it can cause us to miss the good that is right in front of us today. Is it possible that fear is blinding us from the beneficial right in front of us? And outcome number three that we don't want. Fear robs us of the things that we can enjoy that we're focused on that we can't have or do. You see, fear often causes us to focus on the worst outcomes and the current hardships as the only reality. And yes, our current situation has real difficulties and real suffering. However, that's only part of the story and it's not the full story. Yesterday, I made a whole post about the opportunities this current challenge gives us. Instead of letting fear drive us to focus on what we're missing, what if we choose to look at the opportunities this challenge could give us? We all have something to be thankful for, even in the midst of adversity. And outcome number four that none of us wants, fear will disconnect us from God and from others. You see, fear isolates us from God and from people. Fear makes us falsely believe that we are on our own. Fear will sell us a lie that if we don't look out for ourselves, nobody else will. And neither of those is the whole truth. You see, circumstances are not the indicator of God's love or care, the cross is. God passionately loves you and the tomb of Jesus is empty. God is good and he is in control. Yes, the world isn't broken and busted, but there are lots of good people who are care and are willing to sacrificially help others. I feel so privileged to be a part of this Jesus-led community called South Point Church. We do have some tough times ahead of us but I'm excited about the privilege and the opportunity we, the church, have to love our community. This is an unprecedented time in our lives that will allow us to show not only the love of God, but the peace of God is available to all. May God's grace be with us, and let us remember the scripture that, scripture that calls us to something different. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and of self-discipline. God bless, and have a great day.